Okay, this is about take seven of mini lecture number seven. I'm gonna finish chapter two and I'm trying to do it in a lightning fast fashion. And how am I gonna do it in a lightning fast fashion? I'm gonna do it by writing down the answer and then showing that the answer works. And that's kind of what Knight did too. If you look at 219 and 221, Equation 219 is what I've written up here, except I've written it my own way. And equation 221 is what I've written here, except again, I've written it my own way. Let's compare Knight's way of writing it and my way of writing it. Knight, on the left-hand side, wrote V final in the X, S direction. I just said, I want to know V sub S at the time T. Knight on the right hand side here, where I have t minus ti, he wrote delta t. But for Knight, delta t is t final minus t initial. And I'm just leaving the f's off my t final. So you can really see that mine and Knight's are the same. Similarly, compare my 221 with Knight's 221. So there's my formula for the velocity in the s direction as a function of t. It's the initial velocity in the x direction plus the acceleration in the s direction times the elapsed time. That is the equation for constant acceleration. And I'm also claiming that the position itself, s of t, which by the way could be x of t, or could be y of t, or even could be a motion along some diagonal, which we might measure in the s direction, whichever, s of t is equal to the initial s plus the initial velocity times the elapsed time plus one half times the acceleration times t minus ti squared. Wow. Well, at least a couple of these terms probably make sense. S of t is the in equal to the initial position for starters plus the initial velocity times the elapsed time. Those two terms look pretty good. What's this term doing here? That's our good old area of the triangle term. If a, well, if a particle has some acceleration, that causes the velocity to rise linearly. And the way that triangle looks is if that triangle has a width that's t minus t initial, that that width there is t minus t initial. And then the height of this triangle is whatever this slope is times the width. So the height of the triangle over here is a sub s times t minus t initial. There's the slope times the width. There's the width. The area of a triangle is one half times the width times the height. And if you take one half t minus ti and multiply it by a s t minus ti, you get one half a s t minus ti squared. So that's just area under the triangle again. And this all makes great sense. In fact, we're pretty much done. But let's just double check things the calculus way, okay? If this position function is supposed to give you this velocity function, we ought to be able to take the derivative of this to get that. Because taking the derivative of this is the, says that the slope of this should give us that. Okay, let's take the derivative of this thing. What is ds of t dt? Well, the derivative of a constant is zero. The derivative of this thing, well, this is a constant that's multiplying t minus ti. Okay, so we've got the multiplier, and then we have to take the derivative of this thing over here that it's multiplying, but the derivative of t minus ti with respect to t is just one. Because the derivative of the second term here is nothing, and the derivative of t with respect to t is 1. So look at how much simplification we've already got. ds of t dt is basically simplifying down to vis. But now we have to take the derivative of this term. Okay, we got some multipliers out front, 1 half as. 
and then we have to take the derivative of something squared. And hopefully you're far enough along in calculus to know that the derivative of something squared is two times that thing, and then the derivative of that thing. But the derivative of t minus ti, we already said, is 1. So there's that. And sweet, the 1 half and the 2 cancel. So it's just 1 half. It's just as times t minus ti. Thing times 1 is redundant. Thing times 1 is redundant. Adding 0 is redundant. And we've just learned that ds of t dt is vis plus as times t minus ti, which is exactly what we needed it to be. Okay, so this position function gives you the velocity function that you wanted. Let's see, and for sake of space, I'm going to erase a little bit. Let's see if this velocity function gives you the acceleration function that we wanted. The acceleration function that we wanted is we know this is supposed to correspond to constant acceleration, and constant acceleration is just the number, a sub s. So is the slope of this thing equal to a sub s? Let's try it. dvs of t dt is equal to, what's the derivative of vis? It's a constant, derivative of any constant is 0. Plus, what's the derivative of this term? Well, this term has a multiplier, a sub s. And then it's multiplying t minus t sub i, but the derivative of t sub t minus t i with respect to t is 1. So we just show that dvs of t dt, if vs of t is that function, is as, which is exactly what we needed it to be for constant acceleration. And really, every last other problem we're going to do with this is just rearranging those equations that I had up there. With different unknowns, different givens, you just keep rearranging until you get the answer that was asked for. Tree fall. Well, I'm going to tell you that that would be probably usually written, just like we wrote it just a minute ago, that would be written that y as a function of t is equal to uh, whatever y was at t equals the initial time plus uh, whatever the velocity in the y direction was initially. So v y initial times the time difference plus one half whatever the acceleration in the y direction is times t minus t initial squared. Free fall. Free fall. There's the most general thing. What is free fall? Free fall is when ay is equal to minus g, where g is some constant that I'll give you in a second. But free fall is when ay, the acceleration, is in the downward direction. That's where this minus sign is written out. And it's some number. And it's a number that's true at the surface of the Earth. And the number is 9.8 meters per second squared. It turns out that's the amount of downward acceleration that we are all feeling when we're standing on the surface of the Earth. And the only thing stopping you right now from shooting downwards at 9.8 meters per second squared acceleration is the floor that's pushing back up against your feet. Otherwise, you would shoot down as fast or faster than that eraser. And if there were no air resistance, anything I dropped would shoot down with acceleration 9.8 meters per second squared. So let's put that in. Ay equals minus g. There it is. There's our solution. Let me make that a bit tidier. There's our solution for the problem of free fall. And it was very easy because we've already done the most general case of constant acceleration in any direction. So go ahead, read 2.5. And finally, let's nail 2.6 while we're at it. 2.6. 2.6 is motion on an inclined plane. 
So you have some plane here, theta. And usually it's just whatever motion would occur on an inclined plane if gravity was the only thing causing things. Now this I'm going to try to make a little bit intuitive here. Here is the force of gravity or the direction that gravity would like to accelerate you. Now you can resolve that into two vectors. There's a vector in this direction plus a vector in that direction. Can you see that the vector in this direction, which is perpendicular to the block, plus the vector in that direction, which is parallel to the block, the sum of those two vectors gives you that vector. So it might be reasonable it might be reasonable to resolve this vector into to those two vectors and to know that to the extent that gravity has a component that is perpendicular to the surface of the block, that component can do nothing. Why? Because the block is sitting there blocking any acceleration in that direction. I guess that's why it's called a block. Okay, so this block is blocking any possible acceleration in that direction, which means that the only acceleration that it's not blocking is whatever that acceleration is. But that angle there is the same as that angle there. And this vector here has length g. So this vector here, if that's the hypotenuse of a right triangle, this vector here has length g sine theta. Oh my, we're all done. Motion on an inclined plane is now a solved problem. The acceleration in the direction down the plane is proportional to g sine theta. Not a nice whole g, not zero, but something in between, which is g sine theta. So let's plug that in. We'll say s of t is equal to s initial plus whatever the initial velocity was times the elapsed time. And now here, instead of A being just simple old minus G, we have a positive acceleration in that direction, which is one half G sine theta times T minus T I squared. Let me just check two things. If the block is absolutely level, okay, so there's my block theta. If the block is in fact level, that is if theta equals zero, I better get no acceleration. Well, theta equals zero plugged into sine theta gives you zero. So good, there's no acceleration term in the case that theta equals zero. And here's another case I can check. So let's check theta equals 90. That's like an insanely steep block. In fact, that's a block that looks, it's like perfectly straight down the front face of that block. If I have theta equals 90 degrees and I put it into this formula, well, sine of 90 is 1. So this formula simplifies to this in the case that theta equals 90 degrees. 1 half g times t minus ti squared. Now, why isn't there not a minus sign here? Because you'd think if I have an infinitely steep block that I would get the problem that I got just a minute ago, which was the free fall problem. Well, the only difference is, and this plus sign is correct, is that I'm measuring s in the downward direction. I was measuring s in this direction. I'm measuring s in that direction now. So except for the fact that I am kind of have flipped around my coordinates, this equation and that equation totally agree with each other. Well, that was a lot. We finished chapter 2. I'm excited that we finished chapter two because we needed to finish chapter two, but I recognize that that was a lot and in class on Friday we'll do a lot of problems around that. Okay.